Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm going to do a couple little teardowns. One of them is going to be on this PC unit right here, which is a little bit heavy. Comes out of a scope washer, a Metavator scope washer. And they said that it's got some random anomalies. Just randomly, it has different problems. So we're going to open up, we're going to take a look. Often on old motherboards, there's going to be uh, power filtering capacitors usually around the CPU socket, and those capacitors will tend to bubble up with age. I guess that this guy here is probably reasonably old um, based on the type of ports it's got, you know, DVI ports and stuff. That's going to be an older type of motherboard and or video card. So, guys, let's go ahead and let's take a look on the inside of this guy. And right after we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and tear into this guy. We're going to do an investigation on this motor. This comes out of a patient lift, an Arjo patient lift. And this part was ordered. And for some odd reason, I don't think that this part's bad at all. The weak point on this entire assembly is going to be the nylon spur gear right here. Which this one here is not worn down. It's got still good grease on it. Makes me start to wonder because usually they will break here at the gear before it breaks anywhere else. So let's get into it. Let's start with the PC and let's tear into it, see what's going on with it. And when we're done, we'll go ahead and tear into the motor. So let's do that. Coming up next, right here in Better Biomed. So let's take a look. I have a 20 amp IEC inlet right here. This is for 100 to 240 volts. It says 10 amp, but you can clearly see that they used a 20 amp receptacle here. So we're gonna have to go ahead and jumper that guy with some banana clips to get this guy up and going. I don't believe I have a 20 amp IEC cord around here. But uh, it's got two uh, USB 2.0s. I have a DVI video output. Very curious because this is very unusual layout for a motherboard if the motherboard's laying up against it. And here you can see I've got six USB 2.0s and some AC supply con connectors and water filter, probably DC connector. We're going to figure that out, guys, because I do not know what is behind these panels so let's let's check it out it says it has windows embedded standard that's what the sticker usually the windows stickers which is this little guy right here a lot of medical equipment have these little window stickers and that kind of gives you an an age estimate for the device but uh this one here, I'm just going to take a guess because it doesn't say Windows XP embedded or anything. It just says Windows embedded. I always look for those stickers on a device that's a portable PC like this. All right. Well, this is going to be a small form factor motherboard, probably, or custom. So let's figure out what type of motherboard we got. Uh, it looks like there's slots. So we slide it and then lift. Okay, here we go. All right, here we are. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's see, let me get this guy out of the slots entirely. Wow, I never would have guessed that. So I have got a, uh, what, a U1 form factor power supply. And, oh, wow, look at what's going on here. Okay, so this gun right here is going to be your 12 volt, which goes down into the little motherboard. That's very interesting. So all these are just useless. They're just sitting in there. But we got one 12 volt rail, or two 12 volt rails that are going down into the motherboard along with ground. So two yellow, two black. And that's pretty much it from what I see. Here's those uh, USB ports that were from the side. And I have 
two 500 gigabyte hard drives and I would assume because they use two of them it's probably going to be like a RAID 1. So let's go ahead and check some of this stuff out. Oh, well that's interesting. You guys see what's going on here? I have an LED, which this LED would normally be um, like the one that's on the front of your computer case. But since this one's not connected to your computer case, they just kind of have it teetering sitting in there. And I have a what looks like a diode jumpering between the two pins. And if you guys didn't know, you can test any computer power supply by jumpering these two cables. You see how one of the wires is green and it's going to jumper to a black one. And you jumper these two right here. See how it goes diagonal? You jumper those two together and uh, that will turn on the power supply. So as soon as mains is connected, this guy is on 24 seven. It doesn't shut down like a, like a normal uh, power supply. So that's good to know. This guy is on all the time. I wonder how dirty it is. All right, let's go ahead and disconnect the power. And so this one's not that old because I've got SATA connectors for the RAID. And let's see. All right, they got a little custom solution right here for the power on those SATA drives. That's interesting. This is like a, the old floppy style connector, but they've got that plugged in there. Oh, this is all kind of custom. All right, and the USBs, I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect the USBs. They should just pull off. And they're all labeled, so USB, USB, USB. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take that top panel and put it off to the side. So one of the things that they said is that this guy would have intermittent errors. So intermittent errors are usually caused by problems with either memory, which is right here. I got two memory modules. It could be attributed to heat. So if this guy is building up too much heat, it will lock up the CPU. And the bearings on the fan seem like they're good, but the fan does have a lot of debris on those fins. And the heat sink below it looks like it also has a lot of debris on the heat sink. So there's an auxiliary cooler right here. This is a little powered fan, which is plugged over here to the motherboard. Wow, that's a tiny little motherboard. Absolutely tiny. And it's gonna be an older one because I have a VGA out and it's right beneath it, I have a DVI out. But over here, I've got two display ports. I was not expecting that at all. So I have display port out on this motherboard. Let's go ahead and check it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the motherboard completely from this case. I'm just way too curious about this guy. So this uh, CPU was changed out already because uh, part of our service agreement with uh, with Metavators is that they will come out, you know, they change out whatever they need to. Cold air induction port right here on the front. And uh, I can see there's some debris that goes right across the memory modules and it's got a straight shot right to the CPU cooler. So that's why that guy's getting dirty as well. If they had some sort of filter media right here that you could change during a PM, that would probably pre preserve some of this. I mean, the fact that I've got dust over everything inside this case, it's just kind of telling you what's going on. All right, I'm trying to get this DVI cable out. Wow, that is a beasty little DVI cable too, let me tell you guys. Look at that guy. Alright, so, let's see. Audio, some USBs. Let's go ahead and unplug this guy. Yeah, be really careful if you ever go into any of these stamped PC cases like this one. It's very sharp. All the edges are extremely sharp. And I'll probably get cut up. I had actually somebody 
write me one time and ask me why are my hands all cut up all the time you can see I got scars everywhere absolutely every single knuckles got scars and uh, somebody actually wrote me and said why are my hands all cut up guys um, my hands are cut up because I work for a living <laughs> I, I am the guy that will get it right in there and I will get the job done every single time. And uh, like today, my four-year-old pointed out that my, my fingers hurt right here and I was bleeding all over the place and I had no idea that I was bleeding because after you get hurt a certain number of times, you just, I don't know, I wouldn't say that you completely lose feeling, uh, but it's definitely not as sensitive anymore, that's for sure. All right, and I see that there's a large contactor in here. See that right there? So there is a contactor inside the case. That's peculiar. All right, we'll, we'll have to figure out. That's probably when the, uh, when the machine itself turns on. You can see AC power supply connector. So that guy probably connects maybe from the PC it turns it on I don't know uh, I'll, I'll check that later but uh, that contactor kicks over boots up the rest of the device so that's the case let's take a look at this motherboard I imagine that this is a very expensive PC guys so uh, we have two memory modules and they are caked with some dust of course why wouldn't they be uh, okay, so they're DDR3 2 gig modules. So this CPU is probably about a decade old. That's already kind of dating itself just from the look of that. It's a neat little motherboard. We're going to find out what type of processor is on here because uh, maybe I could use this guy in a little arcade cabinet or something. I mean, look how tiny it is. What a neat little setup. Okay, we're going to pull this guy off so I can get to the fasteners that hold the fan on the heat sink. The whole thing's got to be cleaned anyway, so I, that's why I'm pulling it all apart. There we go. All right, so there's the fan. Oh, nice. You can see the large copper slug in the middle of this guy. These are quarter turn releases. And we should be released. Yep. Right. There it goes. There it goes need a little bit of love oh cool despite how old this guy might be the thermal compound right here is still liquid liquid e and check that out I'm very surprised it's uh, not a complete biscuit right there let me get some cleaning wipes right. okay let's see what type of CPU we got on here Okay. No way. All right. That's <laughs> better than I thought it was going to be. So I have an Intel Core i3 4330. So it's a 4330 chip. Let's go ahead and open it up. Let's take a look. There we go. Let's pull her up. But as I was saying, there's there's only a couple things that really normally cause um, a lot of problems with computers. One of them is going to be memory. One of them is going to be heat. And the other one is going to be these capacitors that are usually around your CPU because they're power regulating. But this is kind of a special deal. It's got special capacitors. You see these ones right here? These ones are not normally known for going bad. And you can see some of the power phases for the CPU around the outsides. 
the capacitors that normally go bad are electrolytics. And I don't have any electrolytics here. Or do I? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So the type of le electrolytics that normally go bad are these ones right here. You see the green one? And you can see the top of it, how it's got the little X over it. That is normally the type of capacitor that goes bad. And at anywhere from 6 to 10 years, I mean, whenever I have a computer that's starting to have problems, I immediately open it up. And you will see these capacitors just all around the CPU socket. And they start to go bad. But this one here looks like it's a higher quality motherboard. It's got better capacitors on it. I'm just cleaning off the fan right now. Cleaning it up. Wow. I bet you this guy is going to work just fine. Load a fresh copy of Windows on it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the CPU back in here because you don't want to leave it out. Uh, they will get damaged. You see all the, the pins are actually here on the socket instead of on the CPU. Which is good because, you know, the CPU is less likely to get damaged than the socket, you would assume. And CPUs are way more expensive than a new motherboard. I mean, the higher end motherboards can be seven or $800, but a higher end CPU can be thousands of dollars. So I'm not really sure how much this CPU costs, but uh, I'll figure that out. So there's two alignment ears. You can see one of them right here and right here. And those two alignment ears match up with the alignment gaps in the CPU. And all we do is push that down and lock it in. And here we go. So that guy's gonna go on there. I will clean this guy up, put some better thermal compound on it. And I will give this guy a run for its money because I bet you it's absolutely fine. Maybe hook it up to a proper power supply. That little 1U power supply. This guy right here. It's a fully featured power supply. It doesn't smell like it's bad. Normally power supplies uh, will definitely give you a smell. And also there's a forced air induction on it. So you want to make sure that the bearings on the fan are good. You can easily do that by just prodding at it and seeing uh, if it has a temptation to spin. Because if it's resisting spinning, then that means that your bearings are going bad and, you know, your power supply is boogered up. So, you might as well just toss it. Alright guys, so, let's see. That is the computer. Let's check out this motor. Look at this guy. So, this is uh, just a regular, it says 24 volt DC. So, very simple. It's got a gear reduction right here. It's got a transmission. And that comes to an output shaft, which has a nylon gear. Very simple. But the duty cycle on these guys is really low anyway. And like I said, the weak point is designed to be the nylon gear. They do that on purpose. So in case this guy crashes or whatnot, instead of tearing metal or whatever it's going to break, instead it's just going to strip the gear. And it pretty much preserves thousands of dollars worth of linkage instead of just, you know, uh, what, 30 cent gear. So a lot of people complain, why would you put a nylon gear on a, on a power transmission? But they do that intentionally so that, you know, it doesn't break. All right, let's see, we got our uh, power supply. Let's go ahead and move the motor over to this next window so that you can see it running. I'm hoping, I'm thinking it's gonna run absolutely fine. We're gonna find out together. Here we go. I've got my power supply set at 12.7 volts DC. Um, it should be self-explanatory, right? Black to negative, red to positive. Should be. Let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so that's sounding pretty normal. So this is at 12.7 volts. Let's go ahead and turn it up. It is a 24 volt motor. That's 23.9. I'm pulling 1.7 amps. 
I'm messing around with the voltage to see if the amperage changes. Remember, as the voltage goes up, technically the amperage should go down. So I'm at 23 volts, 24 volts. I'm sitting at 1.6 amps steady. 1.53 at 24 volts. So the amperage is not going up, the motor's not getting hot, and the transmission sounds perfect. Normally it would be clunky, you'd hear maybe some of the nylon gears. I'm assuming that there's nylon gears inside it. So that's one way of using a regulated DC power supply to troubleshoot. I'm testing out a motor. If I seen the amperage climb up or if I seen the motor getting hotter, hotter indicates that there's something wrong inside the motor and you would watch the amperage climb on your DC power supply. So the motor does have its voltage listed. I could probably look up the part number and see what its rated amperage is. No real need. I'm just gonna test it the way it is. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the cover so that y'all can see what the inside of one of these transmissions looks like. So remember, when it comes to anything that rotates, you're gonna have a proportion of torque to RPMs. So you can hear the motor spinning at much higher RPMs than the spur gear. That's because it's got a gear reduction. It reduces the amount of RPMs, and by doing so, it multiplies the amount of torque. So that's why the motor sounds like it's screaming but it's really not moving that fast at the output. Okay, so I've got a gasket here on the back. Pretty nice one. Ooh, nice. Okay, well the grease still looks good. That's positive. And let's see, I've got a large nylon gear which goes into a, a worm drive. You can see the worm gear up in there. See that? See how it interfaces with this Nylon gear here, just slides in. There's no preload or anything. Normally you, on this type of assembly, you'd probably see like a spring or something as a preload. Um, nope, nothing of the sort. So it just has a bunch of grease on the backside of it. The uh, bearing for the housing actually feels like it's pretty good. Or it's a bushing rather on this one. Oh, I do see a preload washer up in there way up on the inside. I don't know if I can get enough light up in there to show y'all, but there is a little preload washer up in there. So this guy is spinning absolutely fine. Let's go ahead and pull the motor apart so that y'all can see what the motor looks like. That's what I'm talking about. This should be a regular brush DC motor. You can almost smell the electronic smell when you get down by some brushes. All right, so there's only two fasteners that slide all the way through that hold this thing together. They screw into the end cap. All right, that's the transmission. Nice light aluminum casting. All right, so this is actually a pretty well-built motor. So you can see right here, there's a supporting bracket in the top next to an output bearing for the shaft. And it's a nice sealed bearing too. Let's go ahead and pull this whole guy out. And, <laughs> okay. Some very strong permanent magnets down in the housing. It took quite a bit of force to pull those guys out. So right here, you're gonna see, oh man, I got grease all over, hold on. Let there be light. Got grease on everything, see, that's normally why I wear gloves. So you've got two brushes, right here and right here. The brushes look like they're excellent. The commutator bar looks like it's excellent. This uh, bearing is pressed on, I can't move it. Otherwise, I'd show you guys exactly what's going on. 
So everything looks like it's in excellent condition, almost brand new. And like I said, this motor is a low duty cycle part. It gets very low wear and tear. And the fact that Biomeds changed these parts out for little to no reason. I mean, this guy here, it was ordered, so I changed it out anyway, but it uh, wasn't really necessary. So you have capacitors here, and then you've got a large inductor right here. And both those are to help filter out some of the noise. Brushes create noise, all right? So as you power these guys up, you can see that there's little commutation bars. It's those little brass pieces that line up, and the brushes will hit the commutation bars, and they energize it, which energizes parts of the coil. And it adjusts the north and south of the motor, which is what makes it spin. So there's a couple other things I want to point out here. You can see that there are grinding marks in the motor right here. And let's see, where's the other one? Oh, right here is little tiny nicks. So those are balance marks. And what they do is they spin this guy up. They've got it on a chuck and it tells them where to place grinding marks and how deep, how much material to remove. And they do that to balance it up because all things that rotate have harmonics. I've said that before. And you know, the way that you get rid of harmonics or minimize them is you are gonna make it as balanced as possible. So even though there's just tiny little scratches like right here in the surface, that still removes enough material that it balances out the rotor. So yeah, look at that large granny mark. So one of the other things that you should know is these motors, in order to make them better, especially on tools, here, let me see if I can get the light on the situation here. So we've got all these copper commutator bars and the wires are wrapped under a little tab and the tab is bent over. And that's how you make a connection for each one of these wires that are on these coils. It's just wrapped underneath the commutation bar, it's folded over, and it's, you know, spiked. And now you have an electrical connection. But this is the weak point in brush DC motors. Not, not just the brushes, but these commutation bars where the wire connects to them. When you get a wire, and that wire is, uh, when it vibrates, you know, over time, copper work hardens, which means it gets brittle. If you've ever taken a piece of copper and you bent it back and forth and it just snaps off, that's what happens on these commutation bars. And it happens all the time, especially on older tools. So nowadays, the way that they mitigate that is they will place epoxy down here in between the wires and the commutation bars, and that keeps those things from breaking. This one does not have that, but it's a low-use product, you know, so it's probably going to outlive whatever vibrations it gets especially since they balanced it so well. But yeah, normally these guys here would have some sort of epoxy. If I were to pull apart one of the motors for uh, a power tool, guaranteed that they're gonna be epoxy. That's just because it's a, probably a higher use tool, but it is what it is. So guys, this motor was actually fine. Everything about it was fine. The transmission was fine. It runs, it runs beautifully. The grease is still fresh. I have no idea why this patient lift, the motor was changed out. No idea at all. Normally, if there's some sort of breakdown, you'd see it right there by the brushes, or you see metal flex appear in by the stator magnets. But you don't have any of that. It's This motor is absolutely fine. This is just another case of somebody ordered parts that they didn't need, and here we are tearing it apart for your leisure because why waste it? You know, I've already changed out the part according to what somebody said they needed. And uh, here we go. You know, the part was just fine. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. That was it. Two teardowns. I got a motor and it's a CPU out of a Metavator scope washer. Both units appear to be good, or at least they're salvageable parts. So you don't just have to throw stuff away. We try and find another use for it somewhere further down the road. Thanks for watching, guys.